died. 1883, when we was wrecking up the old Waldorf, I found a silver dollar from 1841. Yeah. And the missus wears it for a locket. Makes a swell looking locket. Watch your step, Miss Crabtree. You'll see to my trunks, James. Yes, ma'am. Sure will, like always. Thank you, James. Good morning. Good morning. This is on I called to speak about my bill, which is somewhat in the rear. Uh, contrary to my expectations, the large check has not arrived, so if it would be possible... Oh, of course, there's nothing pressing about the matter. That is, you will be saved. Uh, you have made plans, I presume, as to where you're going to live? Oh, dear, yes. I shall live in England with my dear friend, Lady Scorsese. You know, they always called us... A heavenly twin. <laughs> oh, no. A hellish twin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we raised the dickens all over Europe. Did I never tell you about the time Lady Scarsby and I were arrested for swimming the Grand Canal in Venice in our birthday clothes? Yes, I, I, I remember. <laughs> that was the year I played Zaza in Berlin. It was a command performance for the young Wilhelm. But we hoaxed his Imperial Highness. Lady Scorsby played the part. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Willie adores Zaza. He had so much sympathy for amiable ladies. But Willie never knew the difference. We were exactly alike. But heaven's alive. Scorsby didn't know the line. You know, I played Zaza 800 times. Uh, Miss Crabtree, before you sail, have you sufficient funds for moving? Oh, I can manage. I thought if you would accept this way. Oh, no, I... No. But it might be useful for tips. Thank you. You'll add this to my account? Oh, of course. Oh. Good morning. Good morning. Well, there goes that account. I think I'll frame this for a keepsake and inscribe it in memory of a warm heart and a foolish head. She paid this bill years ago when she was the greatest actress in the theater. She made this place practically by her patronage. Yeah, but now that the party's over, what did you get her? This. It's sure is sad to see you go, Miss Crabtree. One does hate parting with old friends and surroundings. But we've had seven with James. Them was good days when we had them. Don't forget the night, James. <laughs> <laughs> well, goodbye, James. Goodbye, Miss Crafty. You know, if you all need anybody... That's kind of you, James. But the truth is, I'm going to live with Lady Scorsese in England. Drive me to the nearest table Scorsby place, ma'am. Oh, pretentious looking hot, isn't it? Hasn't changed a bit. Back in Scorsby Manor, this would call for a new bell. Or a better butler? Your Peters, I suppose. Uh, Pennock, sir. I mean, miss. Uh, madam. You're a poor guesser, too, Pennock. I'm Lady Scorsby. Pay that man his fee. Uh, 
You must be Catherine. Huh. I'm Mrs. Scoresby. What can I do for you? Do for me? I'm visiting you. Pardon, ma'am, but where can I put Lady Scoresby's things? Lady Scoresby? Oh, I'm so sorry. For the moment, I didn't recognize <laughs> you. Please forgive me. That's all right. You? Why, you're not... Not dead? You can't kill me. You should know better than that, John. Aunt Henrietta. Yes. <laughs> well, why didn't you cable? And meet a horde of cameramen at the pier? Raise your skirts a little higher, Lady Scorsby. <laughs> You're naughty. <laughs> Same old Aunt Hetty. <laughs> Lady Scorsby's luggage, Fenix. And have Robin prepare the guest suite. We're really happy to have you with us. Nice of you to say that. After my ungracious conduct when I last was here. Let's not say how long ago that was. The years have been kind to you, Fenix. But you, John, you've been working too hard. Still money-grubbing, eh? These are strenuous times. But you don't show them. You're as vigorous as ever. Mental attitude, my boy. Aunt Hetty, I want you to know some friends of ours. This is her lady, Martin Debbie. Lady Scoresby, our Aunt Henrietta. How do you do? We meet again, Lady Scoresby. Uh, oh, come now. Have I changed so much? Rome, 1913. The Princely Campos. Oh, yes, of course. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, yeah, you, you were that nice-looking boy. <laughs> yeah, you have changed. I'm glad I'm not in the memory book. So you're the notorious... The notorious Henrietta Scorsby. When you've done as much as I have, my dear, to gain a reputation, you won't resent the notoriety. Oh, that year in Rome. Hetty and I... Hetty? I didn't say Hetty. I said Sarah. Surely you remember Sarah Crabtree, my dear friend, the actress, the great... Actress. Of course. Whatever became of her? She retired. But to get back to Rome, all roads do. <laughs> <laughs> the prince was so deliciously conspicuous. He always called me right bower, and Sarah he called left bower. And he said he didn't care which bower he found himself with. <laughs> <laughs> Aunt Henny, I'm blushing. <laughs> it becomes you, my dear. Well, Sarah took a great fancy to the prince, so I gave him to her and climbed the Matterhorn. Uh, did you really climb the Matterhorn alone, or was that just press gossip? Uh, I've got a skinned mizzen mask to show for it. You want to see it? Uh, will you have an order? Oh, gray unsalted caviar. You do yourself well, John. No, thanks. Uh, will you have a cocktail? My palate says yes, but my intraventricular glands cry no. <laughs> <laughs> that leaves all the more for me. And I suppose you smoke like a chimney, too. Let me look at your hands. I thought so. Really? My dear, you're on the edge of a precipice. Go away. I advise a sea voyage. Sea voyage? Alone, I presume. Elaine. Of course. No woman has a chance to rest if there's a man along. Much as it might please certain persons, I prefer to stay. Uh, you want to freshen up a bit. Yes, thanks. It was a weary journey. Oh, stupid of me, dear. You'll excuse us while I show her head to her room. Au revoir, madame. When a man's as charming as you are, I become suspicious. Anyone would think she owned the whole world. She does own about a half of it. Don't seem mighty funny to me, so rich and coming here with one trunk and two bags. That's just eccentricity. Hmm? It means doing what you like, such as giving a dime for a tip. Dime a tip? It's an insult. Some of our best people give dime tips. I, I think you'll like it here. You won't be disturbed. And if you need anything at any time, there's an inner communicating telephone. And here are some books. Henning will bring you more from the library. I suppose you'll be wanting hunting and flying and adventuring things to read. Yeah, yeah. That's good. What's all the excitement? Aunt Hetty, this is our daughter, Dorothy. Oh. My dear, you you needn't have been in such a hurry. You could have waited to put on some clothes. So you're Aunt Hattie. Well, I've always wanted to meet you. Put it there. You sounded like a grand guy, and you look it, too. How long are you going to stay? By Dorothy. We hope she'll stay with us a long time. So do I. I'm just dying to hear about all your strange adventures and romances. Dorothy, don't make a nuisance of yourself. Happy young people are never a nuisance. Aunt Hattie, what are your favorite men? 
My favorite men. Oh, my favorite men. Well, the southern races are fiery and intense, hot and ungovernable. Oh, go ahead, tell me some more. But the northern races, oh, those Danes, big, huge, blonde brute, enormous creatures, oh, but tame. Very tame, so I'm still looking. You come and see me sometime, and we'll have a nice long talk about some other men I know. Oh, Aunt Hattie, you're a pig. I'm sure I smell like one. <laughs> Dorothy, you'd better go dress for dinner. Do you know where your brother is? Yes. Alan said he'd be out late, as usual. Aunt Hetty, we dine at eight. Perhaps you'd rather dine here tonight. This first night, if you'll excuse me, I would prefer it. By all means, ring if you wish anything. We hope you'll be comfortable. Thank you both. Come along, Dorothy. Bye, Aunt Hattie. See you later. <laughs> what has made Sherry, my lady? I thought they'd given up serving wine with soup. Not the older generation, my lady. Entrecé, 1919. your name? Billy? Jimmy? Caesar? Christy? Bing? Oh, is it John? Johnny? My lady, the animal's name is Julia. Oh, Julia. Nice, Julia. Whose dog is it? Please? Miss Dorothy's, my lady. Oh, Julia. Very nice people you have, Julia. Very nice. And you have a very happy home, Julia. And I think my star is in the ascendant. <laughs> oh, how lovely you look, child. Oh, thanks. Why, right, Julia, how did <laughs> you get in here? Well, she just called on me to make the family welcome complete. Oh, you haven't seen Alan yet. He's well. Julia's certainly making herself at home. Probably wanted to let down her hair and tell her trouble. Oh, Julia's a very happy little dog, aren't you, Julia? Hmm. Wouldn't it be nice if we could all be as happy as dogs? Well, it would be a dog's life, wouldn't it? Wouldn't be much sentiment in it. There's not much sentiment left in anything. What's the matter, Jack? Oh, nothing. Obviously. Stop being ridiculous. Tell me. Why, you're in love. Oh, that's splendid. Love is so beautiful. 
It's so comforting. It's so tragic. It shouldn't be tragic. It should be happy. Come over here, dear, and sit down. <laughs> oh, unhappy and in love. I'm in love. You're in love. We're all in love. But it isn't real love. What on earth are you talking about? Aunt Hetty, do you know something? Mother's in love. Yes, dear, of course. With your father. No, with Martin. Oh, what an imagination. Oh, Aunt Hetty, I'm so glad you've come. I just had to have someone to talk to. Well, just go right along and talk. It isn't imagination. I've known it for some time. And the other night, I overheard them talking. We must get her a car of her own, with a footman and a chauffeur. After all, she's been accustomed to it, and we shall have to entertain for her. And how do you suppose we're going to pay for all these things? That's up to you to get the money. You realize we're up against a stone wall right now? The banks are bearing down on me. A display of extravagance would be suicide. If you were after a big contract, you'd entertain the buyer, wouldn't you? Naturally. Well, Aunt Hetty is the biggest buyer you've ever had in your life. She can't live forever. Kitty. Listen to me, John Scorsese. The biggest chance of your life is in your hands. If you let it slip through, I swear I'll leave you. Why did you say that? Because you're throwing away an opportunity to manage her affairs, to inherit her wealth. You're afraid she'll leave this house again. You're not a businessman, you're a bungler. You might have added I am a fool. About you, I mean. Kitty, for a long time I've tried to lie to myself about us. No. But it's been hard to believe that lie. Hard to go on knowing that our love is going to pot along with the rest of our affairs and our children. Because everything's going to pot, I'm to blame. Let's not quarrel. Especially while Aunt Hetty is here. After she's gone, well, the deluge. Those things always right themselves, dear, if we just have patience. What about this boy of yours? Anything wrong with him? He's poor. Oh, I see. No social position. Probably works. He owns a filling station. Ah. I suppose in a few years, then, he'll be the filling station king of Long Island. You know, Rockefeller started small. I imagine with only a can. Oh, Aunt Hetty, you're a dear. <laughs> I wish Mother could see it like that. Will you bring your boy to see me sometime? I'm sure there's nothing we can't cure. Is he good-looking? Oh, he's handsome. Of course he is. Now run along and go to sleep and dream of your handsome boy. We're only in love once. Will you leave Julia with me for company? Oh, I'll give her to you. I'm so happy you're here, Aunt Hetty. Things seem so different now. Night, darling. Night, dear. Good evening, madame. Well, who are you? Oh, I'm fine, thanks. Who are you? Get up! Come on. Why don't you straighten up? Little Alan. Last of the scores, <laughs> Just a young man trying to get ahead. You'll have one in the morning. Come on, get up. Go to your room. Oh, that's me, huh? Near niece. Splendid fellow, Cutsworth. Most accomplished. 
could play a saxophone better than anybody I ever heard. And yet he had the tooth in his head. <laughs> <laughs> Aunt Hattie, could you come with me for a minute, please? Well, yes, of course, dear. Will you excuse me? Oh, I certainly. <laughs> a delightful yes, person, isn't he? <laughs> Eddie, this is Barry. Uh, Barry Graham. How do you do? Turn around, young man. I want to look at you. Solid. Would you like me to say ah? Not unless you feel an ah coming on. <laughs> Excellent judgment, my dear. Excellent. Got any money? Well, enough for two people to live on modestly. You weren't invited to the party, were you? No, I wasn't. Hmm. Kiss her. Go on, kiss her. <laughs> the quicker you two get married, the better. Well, we'd like to, but Dorothy's mother won't let us... Rubbish! You're in love. That's a passport anywhere. Get married first. Then you can work with an untroubled mind. When I was young, I decided between love and money. Well, I got the money. And according to what I've heard, something of the other. Oh, that isn't love. I've no home, no grandchildren. All I've got to worry about is filthy lucre. Now you get married and forget about money. You want to, darling? Of course I do. Terribly. But what about mother? I'll handle your mother. Lady Scoresby, would you mind if I called you Aunt Hetty? The sooner you make me your aunt, the happier I'll be. Isn't he grand? He's a knockout. Only a man in trouble seeks solace in his own company. You have an uncanny way of getting to the bottom of things. Well, what's the matter with you? How long did you intend staying here, Aunt Hetty? Oh, indefinitely. <laughs> Any reason why I shouldn't? I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to go. Go? Yes, I'm broke. Broke? All this is bluff, sailing under false colors. Certain gentlemen are waiting to take this place on Fort Soldier. Good gracious. Why didn't you tell me this before? I was in hopes I could postpone the crash until after you'd gone home. But I'm not going home. I placed it here with you. In six months, I know I could be in a position to provide on this scale for the rest of my life. If only my creditors would give me time. What's wrong with your credit? You know bankers. I've known many bankers in my time. They can't see beyond the obvious. They get panicky if a man hasn't four times as much assets as his loan. Would my guarantee get you an extension? Undoubtedly. Then we'd better go and see them the first thing tomorrow morning. You'll do this for me? Why, of course. You're my people. I, I shall probably <laughs> never find words to express my gratitude. Oh, sir. Sir, sir, sir. I have a few things to be thankful for myself. <laughs> Run out of cigars. Oh, we've been having the nicest chat. The living room's so nice, and don't you think we neglected our guest house? Tell me, where's Aunt Hetty? When I left her, she was crossing the China Seas in a sampan. <laughs> oh, good morning, Auntie. Did you sleep well? Oh, like a nursing baby. Going out? Yes, yes. Your father's going to help me with some business at the bank. Hey. Will you people make a little less noise around here? Well, how do you feel this morning? Is this morning? Well, I thought it was Thursday before last. Oh, you're a fine-looking mess. Ugliness is only skin deep, darling. Only skin deep. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, getting in such a condition. <clears throat> do I feel terrible? <laughs> well, 
You'll excuse a gentleman who is about to retire. There's a problem. Oh, he always does it. I'm so ashamed of him. I don't know what to do. It isn't liquor that makes a man drink. It's something he's trying to forget. Uh, what's on his mind? Some girl? He's no angel, but he never lets girls worry him. What oh, sort of a crowd do you run around with? Oh, that bunch from the 7-Eleven club. That sounds like gambling. It is. It's the hottest bunch in town. That's exactly it. I'll bet you 20 to 1 they've got him so deep in debt that he doesn't dare get sober enough to face himself. Dorothy, let's go with Alan to the 7-Eleven club and see what's what. All right. And maybe we can kill two birds with one stone. The car is waiting, milady. You run along, Addie. I have some telephoning to do. Well, and don't forget to tell that brother of yours he has a date slot for tonight. Okay. Circle seven seven eight thousand. Hello? Hello, Martin. This is Dorothy Scoresby. I'm going to the 7-Eleven Club tonight, and I want you to meet me there. I'm sorry, but you'll have to cancel any other engagement. It's very important. All right. Goodbye. Who was she? No one important. Don't think you're putting anything over on me. And another thing. I saw you whispering to Catherine Scalsby last night and holding a hand. Why, that was nothing. No, nothing, but you had to whisper. Well, if you must know, I was apologizing for your rotten conduct. All the spying and nagging. Well, haven't I reason? Absolutely not. Kitty and I are merely good friends, and I feel sorry for her. Is that any reason you have to make love to her? I never made love to her. No, of course not. Hypocrite. Helene, you must be insane. Not so insane that I don't know what's going on. Not so insane that I don't know a remedy for it. The whole thing is preposterous. These bankers always did give me a pain. You can't see beyond your noses. All you do is to hide behind board meetings and subterfuge. How do you suppose I got all my money? By outsmarting some of the biggest people in the world. Look here, Mr. McArthur, you're a lawyer, and I'm told a good one. Now you listen to this and tell me if it wouldn't hold in any court of law tighter than a 13-page will. My witnesses here. I'm in my right mind. I hereby solemnly swear on my word of honor to pledge all my worldly possessions as security for my nephew's obligations. Is that clear? I think that is reasonably clear, Mr. Lansing. I don't see how I can make it any plainer. Then I think we may safely say Mr. Scoresby will be granted an extension. Do you agree, Mr. MacArthur? Certainly, Mr. Lansing. I thought you would. We understand you have rather large rubber holdings in South America, Lady Scoresby. It was South America, was it not, Mr. MacArthur? Uh, so I understood, Mr. Manson. We were not quite sure just where your holdings were, Lady Scoresby. Were we, Mr. MacArthur? Uh, not exactly, Mr. Lansing. Mr. MacArthur, Mr. Lansing, what is this? A board villa? Why don't you come right out and say what you mean? I despise indirection. You want to know where this collateral is, is that it? Yes, that is it. Uh, isn't it, Mr. Lansing? Precisely, Mr. MacArthur. If you must have an exact description, you can cable my London solicitors, Danson, Fulton, and Crownshield. But I warn you, if you betray my whereabouts, I shall withdraw my support. I wish to remain in seclusion. Lady Scoresby may rely on our discretion, may she not, Mr. MacArthur? Absolutely, Mr. Lansing. Uh, your solicitors are... Uh, uh, Samson. Danson. Putin and Crown Shield. And that's that.
Mobile. That's an old-fashioned game called African Golf. Really? Uh-huh. Is it difficult to play? Uh, no, it's very simple. Put your money down, roll the dice, they take your money away. You keep that up until you've gone broke. Oh, that's Thanks. stupid. Why not give it all to her in the first? <laughs> this way, please. Let's be all right, Mr. Corsi. Fine, thank you. Glad to meet you, Lady Scorsby. Alan tells me he's in a bit of a jam. What's that what you call it, Alan? Yes, a bit of a jam. Could we discuss this privately? Certainly. In my office, Lady Scorsby. Oh. Now, you wait right here, Alan. Don't you stir. I don't want you to get in any more jam. Well, what are you waiting for? Go on. You think you've been exactly fair? Well, old fair and... Love can turn into war. Aren't you anticipating things a little? Listen, Dad's a grand guy. He always has been, and especially fair to you. So why do you take advantage of him? I'm not. I have as little to do with him as possible under the circumstances. He'd have a lot to do with you if he ever found out. How's he going to find out? Not until the time comes. Jam that Alan is in? I have some of his checks. How much? 20,000 worth. 20,000 is much. No, but worth troubling about. The real point is that the checks bear the signature of John Scorsby. <laughs> John Scorsby is good for 20,000? Yes, I know, but the bank returned them, said the signature was not Mr. Scorsby's. May I see them? Certainly. There you are. <laughs> the young fool, playing beyond his pocket. I spoke to him several times, your ladyship. Alan is a Scoresby, Mr. Talbot. Gambling's in his blood. Check. That is unfortunate. That shall make him good. I hope Alan appreciates. He won't. I'll take care of the checks, Mr. Baggett. Now, how about an account for myself? I would enjoy a bit of play tonight. The sky's the limit, Lady Scoresby. 
Lady, uh... Henrietta Scoresby. One of the few English names that's pronounced as it is spelled. Your address, please. The Towers, Bloomsbury. Since the 18th century. Near the British Museum, eh? Near it. Not in it. Yes. <laughs> May I offer you a drink? Oh, my dear sir. I tasted alcohol only once in my life. And that was way up on the side of a mountain in the Alps. You know, I lay down in the snow to die. When beautiful big St. Bernard with a barrel on his collar came to my side and nosed me to wake me up. He was probably the drunkest dog that I have ever seen. <laughs> Your bank, Lady Scoresby. Bank of England. You understand those dogs are wonderfully clever. And this one had learned to shake loose the tap and lick the brandy out for himself. But there was a little left. So I wrestled with him until I managed to get enough out of what was left to revive me. So we both staggered back to the monastery, where the good father put the dog to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Just the usual formality. About how much? Five thousand. Many a one of these I've signed from London to Calcutta. I remember one night at town, after the season's last race. Another race. Club. My dear lady, all four races. Well, I never in my life saw that happen before. Wait, uh, do you think you could do it, Mr. Taggart? Do you, Mr. Taggart? I might try. My luck might be as good as yours. Uh, a little bit. How much? A thousand. Dollars, I mean. A thousand, then. Look out for your thousand. Carter, I ought to be lucky tonight. Now, my credit, please. Five thousand credit, much of one, make it six. Exactly. Now, let the play begin. Why do you bother with married women when there's so many nice girls? What girls? Oh, girls that are unattached. They always want to get married. Not always. Modern girls have different ideas. Have you? Well, I don't want to get married. Not for a long time, anyhow. Come on, let's get out of here. It's so crowded. What about your aunt? Well, Ellen will take care of her. All right, let's go. Alice, it just seems you cannot keep out of jail. Well, uh, uh, Andy, I was looking for you. Oh. Nine. Seven out. It's your turn, Andy, if you'd like to play. Oh, yes. I think I should like to throw a seven. Oh, what? I beg pardon. Uh, what are you shooting for? I said a seven. I mean, how much money? Oh, I'll raise a thousand dollars. Okay. You're faded. I beg your pardon, young man. I may be a trifle elderly, but I am not faded. <laughs> 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 well, go ahead. Issuing four. Seven. Pay the line. I feel lucky. I went to the 2,000. Come on, you seven son of a seven son of a seven. Seven. Pay the line. Uh, you, you better drag down half of that. Never be a piker, son. I'm wagering the 4,000. Here I come. This week for the You said it. Eleven. Pay the line. I win on that, too. Oh, you do. You better drag down, Mr. Eddie. One never makes money dragging down, as you call it. I'll wager the eight thousand. Why don't you bet on her? She's 
pardon. I beg your pardon. They're off. They're in. Have a hold here. You better drag down with Aunt Hetty. So much came back forever. You don't know your Aunt Hetty. I bet it all. I'm about to make another of a long line of passes. Hey ho! Seven. Uh, <laughs> that's all in the prologue. Now let's play it again. Uh, uh, let me see those dice. Take your choice. Well, sir, just as I was getting in my stride, I was good for a hundred more passes. Oh, I'm having quite a run. A bit more and you'll have me on the tree selling pencils. You better get your tin cup ready. Oh, I'll take those checks now. Here's for the checks. My 5,000 credits. Wait a minute. These may be frightened by the noise. I'm writing down all but $20. Good. Only 20 That's my system. Any law against it? There ought to be. Have it your way, lady. I will. Wham! Crap. Crap, huh? Rather unusual, what? <laughs> Risking another 20. <laughs> Come on, dice. Saving needs a new pair of shoes. Crap. Looks to me. I don't want to hear how it looks to you. She's a helpless woman, would you? Here, take the dirty chick. And take a look at this. There you are. That's what you play with. Crooked. No more sense of fair play than a snake. With my doubtful privilege, to visit all the sin spots of the world, from Shanghai to Chicago. But this is the worst. A trap for the young and unsuspecting. You can't win here. I've just shown you how impossible it is. My dear madam, you'll have to keep quiet or leave. You can't talk to my aunt like that. What do you mean? I certainly will not be quiet. You may not know what to do in the spotlight, but I do. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There. That'll take care of him. It's a good remedy, my lady, but a cold lamppost much better. But I could hardly suggest that, standing all night with his eye against the lamppost. <laughs> I'm sorry this had to happen, Andy. Uh, you know better than to fool around with that bunch of hoodlums again, don't you? I didn't know the game was fixed. But the way you were going, looked like you fixed it. Alan, do you realize you have serious responsibilities before you? Suppose something should happen to your father. Have you fitted yourself to carry on in his place? Well, I... I hadn't thought much about it. I want you to. Someday you'll have to shoulder the load. And it'll be up to you. You're right, Annie. Of course I am. Now, tomorrow I want you to go right to your father and tell him you're going to take hold and help pull your share of the load. I'll wager you'll see a look come over his face that hasn't been there since his man-child was born. I'll do it, Andy. Good boy. Now get out of here. I've got to get some sleep. Oh. <laughs> hey. Oh. Uh. I've had quite an evening. Terry, I'm so glad to see you. I'm sorry, but that doesn't work anymore. Well, what's the matter? That's what I want to find out. You were out with Martin last night in his arms. You let him kiss you. Who told you that? Never mind. Is it true? Well, there was nothing wrong, Barry. Then you were out with him. Yes, sir. Now, that's enough, Dorothy. Listen, Barry. There was nothing wrong. I... Well, it's not very easy for me to say this, either. I went there to help Mother out of a mess. Perhaps you can explain this telegram. First the mother, then the daughter. Young man, get out from under before I tell what I've got on the Scoresby family. May I see that? Oh, please. She's had private detectives on the job for weeks. They checked every move last night, right to the second. Well, there's no use dragging this out any longer. Goodbye. Oh, 
Kitty, I wanted to ask you, uh, oh, going somewhere? Why, oh no, I was uh, just packing a few things to send to my pet charity. That's a job for your maid. I thought perhaps you had an idea of leaving. What on earth made you think that? Well, I accidentally picked up the telephone a few moments ago and overheard you talking to Martin. But what I really wanted to say was, I should like to give a little dinner party. Why, of course you may, any time you wish. Tonight. Or only the family. And uh, will you ask Barry for me, please? And of course we must have Martin. And his dear little wife, Helene. Why, certainly. Thank you. I haven't eaten anything. I guess I wasn't very hungry. I've enjoyed it. The best dinner I ever had. You seem to be having a pretty good time, Aunt Hetty. Boy, if I ever fall as deeply in love as you two, I'll get somebody to shoot me. Neither one of you have done anything all night but get nibble. Say, when is this big event going to happen anyway? Oh, shut up. <laughs> Alan. Oh, I'm sorry, sis. I promised Aunt Hetty to be different. Thank you, Alan. That was very nice. And now I have something I want to say to you all. When I first came to this house, disillusioned with the world, you were all so lovely to me. Utterly unselfish in your kindness. I thought I'd found a happy home, a harmonious family, blessed with the comforts of wealth and good friends. I found it all a lie. My dear I said a lie. A fortnight after I arrived here, I found an unhappy, ruined family. If this is going to be a family affair, perhaps it might be easier if you excused us. You will sit down again. You are the apple that has contaminated the barrel. Why, Aunt Hetty, I hardly think this is the time This to... is the time for you to listen. Very son. I wish you were, my son. Your auntie has no quarrel with you. But the way in which you receive what you are about to hear will prove just how much of a man you are. I don't expect you to fail me. You know that your daughter has ruined her own happiness and her romance by permitting herself to be petted and kissed by a friend of the family, a married man, Martin Debridge, you know that I am referring to what occurred between you and Dorothy last night. Sit down, John. Dorothy, you and Barry leave the room. Alan, go with them. They will stay right here. You know why Dorothy permitted these familiarities? I will tell you. It was an ill-conceived effort to direct his attentions from her own mother, who had been, shall we say, Indiscreet. Aunt Hetty, stop it. This has gone far enough. It's all true. Listen to the rest of it. Go on, Lady Scoresby. <laughs> I'm enjoying the performance. I've only just begun. I haven't got to you yet. What you say is very true, Aunt Hetty. But I'd like to know just how far things have gone between you well, and Well, we'll come to that later. And John Scoresby, it may surprise you to know. But your son owed a gambling debt of $20,000. $20,000? Don't blame him. Blame yourself for not being father enough to know what he was doing and to guide him in the right direction. I'm not condemning you, Alan. The debt has been paid, and you have given me your promise. But I'm going to cut you all to the bone. I'm going to open the wounds until they are healed and cleansed. And then, I'm going to leave you. I'm going away. Aunt Hattie, I don't want you to go. Mother, she must. Darling, you won't want me to stay when I'm finished. John, Kitty is all to blame. If you had treated her more like a pal, and been a little like the lover that you were once, but insist upon knowing what was going on in your own house, 
It wouldn't have been necessary for you to neglect her in order to save your business. When your real job was right here, at home. Aunt Henrietta, I want you to know that... I know. I know. What happened is perfectly clear. You forgot that your wife was a woman. And Elaine, you forgot that your husband was a man. And they found in each other what you fools failed to give them. Silly to let this go on. You're only making matters worse. Am I wrong in saying that you were on the verge of destroying a home simply because you wanted somebody to pet and pamper you? And you, Helene, might have been happier with your husband if you had realized that he was a normal man who wanted a comrade instead of a suspicious, discontented neurotic. All of what you say may be true, but you're meddling in other people's affairs. As far as there ever having been anything between Kitty and myself, you don't know what you're talking about. You deny that only this morning you and Kitty were making arrangements to go away tonight. You can't prove that. I heard you with my own ears. <coughs> Martin. You have two tickets for Europe. Please take Helene to the boat as soon as possible. Please wait to all of you. <laughs> We're almost at the climax of this little comedy. Sit down, Barry. John, your money troubles were easily arranged. An act that wouldn't have been booked by a four-a-day vaudeville circuit was worth a million dollars to the Scoresby credit. Aunt Henrietta, I don't understand. That whole act was a fraud, concocted by a sick, penniless, forgotten old woman who in desperation palmed herself off on you as a relative. It was a part you played, a great role. What on earth are you talking about? Don't interrupt me, it's true. I'm a fraud and a cheat. Oh, but this is all uncalled for. We've never for a minute thought I of you as I know what you call to say, John, but you must let me finish. I needed food, attention, love. And you accepted me for something that I wasn't. It's rather hard for me to confess to you, dear people, that I'm not your Aunt Hetty. John. This is my dinner party. But we neglected a little detail at the start. I would like you to say grace. Bless us, O oh Lord. Have mercy on us. We thank thee. We thank thee for all these blessings which we have received from thy bounty. Amen. How do I stand, Doctor? Why, you're fine. You're doing fine. Don't lie to me. I won't know. Well... Will it be long? Now, now, don't you worry about it. In my experience, I've seen many people pull through much more serious conditions. Why, only last week, I had a most unusual case in which the patient, through uh, sheer willpower... Young man, I don't mind dying, but I do object to being talked to death. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds more encouraging. Was I... A failure of my last performance. You were a glorious success. <laughs> Aunt Hetty, the real Aunt Hetty, was cruel, without a shred of mercy. Why, you've been nothing but kind to Is it all right between you and Kitty? I can't tell you how grateful I am. Dorothy. 
doing Barry, got your affairs all straightened out. Huh? Then it was all worthwhile, wasn't it? You must be very quiet. Nothing can hurt me now. I don't think I've ever been so happy in all my life. I always said I'd go out at the end of a great performance. I can hear the applause ringing in my ears as the curtain falls. 